Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to get offended, but I'm subjecting myself to this. So why not bring you guys with me through this treacherous journey of one star reviews of my favorite books. My appearance right now is giving me Steve Urkel and I'm not really a fan of it. Continuing on, today is going to be a very heart rate inducing video. So I did the honor of bringing myself some little Christmas treats from our office because by the end of this video, I know I'm going to be stressed. So I figured these treats would put a smile back on my face and that they will. Let's get this video started besties. I have my laptop down in front of you by the way. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. So the first book we're gonna start with is A Girl Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I love this entire series. I think I gave each book like five, four and five stars. I don't think you need to read the novella to gain any knowledge into the world, but this is one of my favorite, favorite young adult series. So let's just dive right in, shall we? <laughs> We're literally starting off with a bang. The first review says, from the moment she said, holy pepperoni, I realized I was too old to be reading this book. Does she say holy pepperoni? I don't remember that. <laughs> The next one says, I made a Goodreads account just so I could give this book one star. The absolute audacity this person has couldn't be me. <laughs> this says, I'm very concerned for this author. It appears they... <laughs> It appears they have never once met a real human being in their life. If that was the case, I'm very concerned for them too. This, <laughs> this review is dark, but it's pretty funny. It was actually published on my birthday. It just says school projects are getting really wild these days. Do you think they're maybe putting too much pressure on kids? This was fun in the same way I imagine waterboarding is. Don't laugh. We love a review that gets straight to the point. I want to wash my brain of this. I'm sure you can. I'm more than certain that you'll find another book that you'll want to wash your brain of too. It was so bad. I want to give it a zero, but that's not possible. So I give it a one. That's an iconic line, overused. Where's the effort? A good girl's guide to murder, more like a nosy teen's guide to drama with the I liked the guy excuse. Where? Did we read the same book? I mean, yeah, romance is a subplot of the small town murder that they're trying to solve, but it's not a main focus. Zero stars, even the font was bad. <laughs> I actually remember really liking the format of this book. It had like mixed media as well. And the audiobook was a full cast. So how could you not love it? Clearly, clearly these people thought otherwise. Next up, I have Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is a recent discovery, a new book that I loved. I read it last month and I'm very curious to see what people have to say about this. A millennial writing fan fiction about Gen Z. Well, she's not wrong. Mentioning AO3, Tumblr, Percy Jackson Gifts, Jungkook, Zendaya, Harry Styles, Billie Eilish, BTS, Paris Hilton, Dragon Age, Timothy Chalamet, Malala, Candy Crush, Taylor Swift, Thanos, The Hunger Games, Lilo and Stitch, You the TV Show, Riverdale, Jughead and Cole Sprouse, Jeff Bezos, Twitter, Snapchat, Michelle Obama, Tinder, M Michael Phelps, Donna Tart, Tony Stark, Christian Dior, Savage, Discord, Bruce Wayne, Corpse Bride, Bob Ross, Scout Massage ASMR is not hot. <laughs> I literally read that just to get that last little tidbit in this video. Scalp massage ASMR is not hot. Honestly, they've got a point there because I agree with that. <laughs> Also, I do agree with this review, but it wasn't as prevalent in this YA book for her. It just says, first of all, Allie, please, I'm begging you to stop writing your male main characters like they're literal giants. If you've read any other Allie Hazelwood, you know she's very stuck on making the male main characters big and muscly and giants. I don't remember it having as big of a role in this book, but I could be wrong. <laughs> this entire video is just gonna be like little maniacal laughs coming from me. Georgie says, yo, nobody told me that YA now stands for Yawns Anonymous. And let me tell you, I've never been more tempted to join a support group. Thanks, Allie. <laughs> Number one, no. I have so many feelings about this book, but not a single good one. Spare your time and read something else. I beg to differ, but okay. Let's move on, shall we? I feel like we have enough for Check and Mate. So next up is gonna be Isabel Cañas's Vampires of El Norte. I read this earlier in the year, and if you don't know what this one is, not a lot of people have read it that I know. Think about this book being a historical fiction Hallmark movie, but then we dip our toes into some vampires. Marco says, I wanted real vampires in horror. Got absolute 
beep. This is just a YA historical romance, so why isn't it marketed like that? I do have to agree with him because this was heavily marketed as a book containing vampires and vampires being like one of the main focuses with a little taste of romance. The most unbelievable thing about this book is not the vampires, but how a crush the characters had at age 13 still mattered 10 years later. I roll. Okay, 13's a little bit young, but I feel like that could still happen in real life. The romance subplot is unbearably and intolerably boring. Where are the damn vampires? Well, they were there. You just had to look for them. DNF at 20%. Boring, dull, lifeless as the one appearance of the vampire. I love me some supernatural romance or gothic themed reads. This ain't it. Girlie, you just had to keep reading. The vampires appear more than just that once. You just gotta give them a little bit of time. Next up, we're diving into one of my favorite romances, Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison. This is literally the perfect book to read this time of year. If you guys haven't read it, I definitely recommend picking it up. It's a small town romance set on a Christmas tree farm. What more could you ask for? I have been deceived. That's the review. They were annoying, I'm sorry. Don't apologize, your opinion is your opinion, but I am going to giggle. Lex says, I really do not understand the hype. It was painful to read. If I had to hear him call her Lala one more time, I was going to throw up. The nicknames are really heavily used, so I hear you, Lex. God, I've never so passionately hated a book before. They were so boring, and the main character actually had a vocabulary of four words. Atrocious. Did I like miss the memo? Was this supposed to be like a caveman romance? That's actually a great idea someone should write that book. Samuel says, this was damn boring. <laughs> That's it. That's the tweet. <laughs> One star. I'd like to love light myself on fire. <laughs> I do not recommend. We'll end it with this review. The sacrifices I made for those Christmas vibes. The illegal website in which I read this scammed me for my time. <laughs> hey, at least you got the book for free. Next up, we're diving into a book that I read this year, and it is My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. This isn't like a five star in the sense like, oh my gosh, this is a life changing book. It's more of a five star in the sense that I was here for the quirky rom-com vibes. It wasn't too cheesy. I just had a good time with it. A vampire that creates fruit when anxious should have been left as an intrusive thought. I don't think I've ever had an intrusive thought like that. What I liked, the letters, notes, text, and diary entries. I loved that part and thought those parts were sweet. They will forever be a weakness for me. I also thought her best friend was a good friend. I agree. What I didn't like, everything else. <laughs> In all bold, a very serious note to all authors everywhere. Please, please keep TikTok out of your books. In a sense, I do agree with that, but the way that TikTok was incorporated into this book, I wasn't very mad about it. It was actually bearable, but if there are like too modern of references, that usually does annoy me as well. I wish I had more respect for myself. <laughs> So many of these reviews are being left on my birthday. Congratulations, I really felt like I was reading about a 100 plus year old man. Well, Helen, that's the point. He's a vampire who's been around for a lot longer than we have been. What a ridiculous fever dream. I have no good comments for this, none. Nada. A fever dream. There are so many books out there about vampires. So I wonder if you feel like all vampire books are fever dreams. Anyone, anyone following what I'm saying here? What I liked in this book is it sets in Chicago. What I hated, everything else. Well, you know what I hate? That you had a typo in your comment. If you're gonna roast one of my favorite books, John, at least have it grammatically correct. This next one just says, disappointed buzzer sound. I'm quite literally going to keep reading those, so I need to move on because there are lots of good comments on that. The next book is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I read this earlier this year as well, and I just feel like based on how absurd this book is, it's going to have some good one-star reviews. This is honestly one of the worst books I've ever had the misfortune of reading. I feel so bad that given our current ecological crisis and the massive paper shortage that even a single tree had to die for this book to be printed. RIP to the trees. <laughs> Well, honey, I hate to tell you that it's just more than one tree that has sadly died to print these books for us. Horror Babe says, I really pushed myself through this book to completely read it, and it was just plain horrible. I know this author writes horror comedy, but this was just awful. It reads like Slappy from Goosebumps. I didn't enjoy this 
at all. You're right, this author does write horror comedy, and guess what, this book was horror comedy. He's really sticking to his genre there and writing what he loves. I'm glad that this review is actively reflecting what he's trying to accomplish. If you've read this book, then this review is going to make sense to you, but it says, <laughs> Sarah says, reading this made me wish I had a puppet hanging around willing to put me out of my misery. <laughs> I actively do not, because if I had puppets or stuffed animals in my house that came to life, that would be horrifying. Did I really just read a 400 page book about a demented puppet named Pupkin? Yes. Yes, you did. And that was the point of the book. Next. Ugh. 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 That's the review. Pupkin is the most annoying name to have read over and over again. If you write a book, you could name the characters whatever you like, so I feel like giving How to Sell a Haunted House a one star review just because of the name of a puppet? Kinda shady. <laughs> This is exactly why I keep scrolling. This one just says, Chucky did it better. <laughs> that review makes total sense, but I can't say Chucky did it better. I kind of like Pupkin. I feel like this one goes with the Chucky comment. It just says, it's a puppet, just kick it. Well, can you imagine like kicking Chucky? Chucky always comes back as do these puppets. Now this next book is one of my all-time favorite romances. This is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I read this a couple summers ago, I want to say, and this story spoke to me so much. I felt like I related to everything that was going on within this book, and the female main character's name is Alexis. I'm so glad to be done with this. Okay, Crystal, move right along. There are a lot of DNF reviews for this book. Different world, huh? Worst female main character ever. Daniel deserves better. I hope they don't end up together. Well, this is a happily ever after romance book and uh, they're fiction characters, so I don't think they will ever end up together. What a letdown. Very boring plot with really annoying characters, especially Alexis. <laughs> I kind of feel triggered seeing my name in a review like this. I feel like I should be mad and I'm kind of getting mad. I knew I wasn't gonna like this book and here I am. Well then why'd you read it? You could have DNF'd it. Another one. Age gaps aren't my thing, sad face. Then why did you read it? You figure out that this romance is an age gap really early on in the book and if you didn't want to read it to figure that out, I'm sure you could have did a little did to do and I'm sure Google would have told you that same thing. I'm ending this book with a very hard hitting statement. Positive reviews are misleading. Huh? Cookie break. I feel like after that, I need a bite. Oh! That was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Good lord! I guess that's what I get for letting it sit out on the counter. But yummy snickerdoodle. I read this one at the beginning of 2022, I want to say. And it is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I loved this book and I know not a lot of people give it five stars. I am very anxiously awaiting the new Salem's Lot movie that's supposed to come out, but it keeps being pushed farther and farther in the future, so I don't know if they're actually ever gonna come out with it, but I think it's done being filmed. I might be completely wrong. Ducky says, it's like the Haunting of Hill House and Dracula had a baby they were both a little embarrassed about. <laughs> That's pretty good. I will say, if you are starting your Stephen King journey with this book, it's probably not the best one to start with. Salem's Lot is very slow and very atmospheric to get into, so I recommend for you to read this one farther down the line. I can see why people DNF this just because they don't give it the time that it deserves to turn into the story that it's going to be. <laughs> This next review is in Spanish and it just says Todo Mal. And if you don't know, like, that just means like everything's bad, very bad, everything's wrong. <laughs> I love how that's it. Like there's nothing farther in review. It's just two words. One star because it is the minimum. I would only give it half a star. I wish Goodreads would let you do half star ratings like Storygraph. No idea what the fuss is about this book. It's slow, boring, and not even remotely scary. You don't think vampires are scary? I know if I had a vampire break into my window while I was in bed in the middle of the night, I would be scared. I'd probably boot my pants. I would. I'm doing a lot of vampire books randomly this video. I guess it's just my taste of what I like to read. But moving right along, our second to last one is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This is also by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix writes some of the most out of pocket, fun to read horror books. And I'm just here for all of them. And I already know these reviews are going to be great. <laughs> DNF at 63%. Go ahead, call me a quitter. I can take it. In fact, I own it. <laughs> I don't know why that one's so hysterical to me. 
This is one of the grossest and most irresponsible things I've ever read. Samantha, that's the point. Comedic horror. Gross? Yes, but that's just Grady Hendrix. If you don't want to read about it, then DNF it. I hated this book. There was nothing here that I liked. I hated the plot, the pacing, the characters, perhaps for Pat, but I hated her half the time too. This was the first Hendrix book that I loathed. <laughs> I really love the use of capital letters and repeated letters here, especially with the bold font. You're really getting your point across, and I love that for you. <laughs> this is a good nose laugh. I needed to bleach my eyes and bring back book burning for this. That's supposed to say book burning, I'm pretty sure. I hate this book, and it hates me right back. At least you guys have like a two-way relationship going on. I'm proud of you guys for communicating. This book made me so very angry. You know what makes me angry? <laughs> that review. <laughs> I'm ending this book with an iconic review. It says, this book is the epitome of gaslight gatekeep girl boss, except the gaslighting is done by men and the gatekeep girl bossing is bad. There were a lot of G's in that sentence, but I kind of see your point there. Let's go to the final book. And this is going to be Christina Lauren's The Unhoneymooners. When this book came out, I listened to the audiobook when I was living slash on vacation at Disney in Florida. I vividly remember not wanting to stop listening to this. Like I was at Disney, but yet I was just thinking about a book all day and when I was going to get home to read this. I need to reread this because it's been quite a few years since I have, but personally I know myself and even if I do reread it, it's still going to hold up as one of the best CeeLo books that I've ever read. Total waste of time. This is very bad. I love the use of the font and the bold. Okay, queen, pop off. When I die, I want Christina Lauren to lower me into my grave so they can let me down one last time. Well, girl, your luck. At least Christina Lauren's two people so they won't drop you. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> this review is terrible as well. Sound of handcuffs. The person who typed this, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You are arrested for lying to innocent people. <laughs> I love the creativity with that one. The only thing I liked about this book was the cover. The cover for this book does slap. Resume of this review. Don't waste your time. This book is honestly terrible. I don't understand how it has an average four star rating. Don't mind me, I'm just picking apart your resume. I actually do recommend wasting your time reading this book. In all bold. Few books make me wanna roll my eyes this much. I roll emoji. I hope your eyes don't get stuck. Do you guys ever have that fear as a kid if you like crossed your eyes or rolled your eyes they'd get stuck in that place? I was always told that growing up. Dang! I hate this book so much. If someone offered me a million dollars to read this book again, I would say no. If someone offered me a million dollars to read my most hated book again, I would absolutely read it again. Honey, that's a million dollars. Think about all the books you could buy with that. This is the perfect one to end this video on because this sums up what all of these people were feeling as they were writing these reviews. It says, God awful. Listen, if my sister told me the sky was pink, I would trust her wholeheartedly. I hated this. Hated it all. TikTok, you lie. <laughs> Honestly, trusting TikTok girls and the book recommendations is not really my thing. And that is why I am not on book talk that often because I don't want to be led astray or in the wrong direction, which I feel like a lot of those hyped up books on TikTok do. With all of those negative reviews out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed myself filming it. If you guys are interested in a part two to this, I would absolutely love to film that. Y'all just got to let me know down below in the comments. Stay tuned for some more book miss videos coming your way. Tis the week to be festive and Christmas is just in a few days. That thought stresses me out a little bit, but in the meantime, I'm going to eat my girl dinner of Christmas treats. Thank you guys so much for watching. Y'all know what to do. Share this video, comment down below, give it a thumbs up. I hope you have a great end of 2023 and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Christmas. That was very aggressive. My body dance for you. We're reading a horror book. It's gonna be gross.